Hi everyone, welcome back to Highly Inspired. I'm Ella. And I'm Jordan. Hi guys, um, this week we're going to talk about how two weeks ago in Houston, Texas, Travis Scott's Astroworld was the scene of the crime of nine deaths. We are sending our love and condolences to the victims and their families. Uh, following this news, there was a lot of firsthand stories that um, kind of exploded across social media with concert attendees posting their experiences directly to the world. We heard every explanation under the sun, um, stemming from stampedes to cardiac arrest to people being injected with an unknown needle to claims of this literally feeling like an actual hell. Um, even with the abundance of these easily accessible firsthand stories, the mainstream media and the so-called journalists have not have not seemed to report on this and have truly buried the story. And we don't know why. Um, there's still a lot of unanswered questions, such as was this Travis's fault? Uh, why was Live Nation so illy prepared? Um, and could this have been prevented? And then why were all these young people suddenly going into cardiac arrest? Jordan and I decided to dedicate this episode to attempt to answer some of the questions that our media has refused to investigate further. Uh, concerts are meant to be a positive, fun experience that you share with friends, and it shouldn't be something that you're fearful to go to. Um, so that's what we're going to get into. And yeah, Great intro. Yes, concerts, concerts are not something that should be havoc. And you and I, we've been to many concerts. Um, I have never had a been a part of a situation at that level of terror and and chaos. But um, I am not surprised that something like that ha happened and probably could happen again. Um, I think with music and alcohol and drugs and energy and so many people, especially after this pandemic, where uh, people have been deprived of attending events where there are mass amounts of people around you and you're socializing amongst all of that. I think that all of those ingredients can sort of um, lay the groundwork for um, just a, a level of aggression and um, I guess intensity that that was. Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel like at a basic level that is what happened. Um, but obviously with the mix of Travis and this planning, this marketing team, the campaign behind it, the imagery, the design work, the promotion that they did for this, it all just sort of ties together in a very um, dystopian and creepy way. And I don't think that anybody really picked up on the imagery that they used beforehand. Until after it the kind fact. of only happened after the fact. And that's exactly what I didn't, I didn't pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely is spooky looking back in retrospect. Yeah. I think that you bring up a really good point. I mean, there's been, I mean, I haven't been to like a intense music festival, uh, post COVID, but definitely pre COVID Jordan and I, like we went to Coachella together. Um, we both have done our fair share of festivals and even raves. And I think that usually like I tend to try to have that such an, uh, awareness. And I think you definitely do, especially since you've explained to me, like you're shorter, which is like a different perspective. Like you, yeah. you can't be in certain crowds or like mob environments. I think I used to be a little bit more like, Oh, I like, I can <laughs> dabble in it a little bit more, but I definitely know like, with, with certain artists like not to be like in the mosh pit like because it, it does get rowdy but normally like if I in the past if I was in that situation a you could always go out you could always mm -hmm. move out um mm -hmm. b people tended to be a little bit usually at least guys in that situation even if they want to mob if they see a girl that's down they try to help you down help you up mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that might not always be the case obviously you had kind of a situation where you were intentionally like targeted at an event but i think this was at even a, a crazier level than just your typical mob pish pit go wrong situation you know <laughs> yes. like this was literally people sardined and I mean right after this happened I knew that this was more than just a stampede or just a, a, a freak accident not that it, it wasn't that but it felt larger than that and it felt almost preventable and I was very interested in trying to like investigate those questions so almost immediately like 24 hours after this happened I started just going on different people's live streams and just taking in what their experiences were. And I was shocked. I mean, the, it was not to the level that it was being reported. What was being reported was just like eight people died. It was like 
they got crushed. We don't really know what happened. Like the people that were telling their stories were saying there was like hundreds of bodies of people that either were like couldn't breathe, were in cardiac arrest, had had seizures, something. They were laying on the floor. I mean, it was described as a, a medical war zone. And I don't know, it just didn't feel like the actual articles I was reading was matching that level of intensity that I was hearing from people that were actually there and had like firsthand Agreed. footage. And I felt this disconnect and that was what kind of pushed us to want to explore this more as a topic. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Highlight that, that those aren't matching up, that the articles of it's just showing vagueness. I felt like all the articles I was reading from main press sources were saying the number of people that were dead and that dozens, I think hundreds, maybe even at least a hundred were injured. Um, many seriously injured. Um, but they weren't explaining any details. It wasn't like they showed any, um, like interest in actually digging in and trying to, um, explain to us that they were hunting for more info. I didn't get that sense at all. Yeah. And so, it, yeah, we haven't really been released. The only more info, I, the more details I've gotten have been from either like primary sources or, um, more obscured, like secondhand sources. Like it hasn't been from like the normal news media things that you would think would be reporting this. Mm -hmm. And what's also strange is I'm like, okay, this isn't like, this shouldn't be like a political thing. Like, I don't really see why you would want to be like censoring this information. Um, so that's also kind of strange yeah. to me too. Like it's, 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 it's not like, like a political figure is tied to this at all directly. Yeah. I mean, a celebrity is, celebrities are, Drake was there. He did an appearance before Travis went on or did they pair up together? I think performing? that, I think that he came on, th they did a collab, but I think that he came on a little bit after Travis to okay. join him, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But I thought maybe we could talk about, um, maybe like some of Travis Scott's like past concerts before we kind of dive into this specific event. And we could maybe talk about just his like general attitude towards his events and kind of, I mean, he's been arrested at, at previous events and has been known for kind of inciting this rage yeah. kind of mentality. I don't know if you have any specific examples that well, you can think of. I, I don't I actually didn't know he was he's been arrested before he has yeah so he <laughs> so um there was an arrest Scary. in uh, 2017 after inviting fans to form this or storm the stage this was Astroworld 2017 and then there also was something with Lollapalooza um I don't have the year for that um, so was the arrest warrant under him inciting violence for that having them rush the stage is that does that qualify for inciting violence? Um, I'm not sure exactly what the official like charge that would be under. Um, let me quickly see. Yeah, because yeah, like yeah. what would the charge be? He was so it says here, Travis Scott, the performer at Friday's Deadly Astroworld Festival in Houston, was arrested in 2017, accused of inviting fans to bypass security to rush the, rush, or rush, rush the stage in Arkansas, according to a report. In a separate incident, he pled guilty to reckless induction of charges following a 2015 incident at Lollapalooza in Chicago. Um, were so you at 2015 Lollapalooza? No, I was at 2017. Okay. <laughs> 2015, that was probably when he first started um, really getting on people's radar as in the, I guess, rap category yeah, genre. Yeah, so I don't know exactly like what that, like inciting violence, I guess, would be the crime. I don't know exactly like the legal like code, like the actual crime would be, but like that was just kind of the general um, synopsis of what happened. And clearly I don't think he learned from those previous experiences because no. before this, didn't he do a tweet where he, he told, said let's rage or something, something like that? along those lines. And then there's literally, footage. which actually I'm fine with that. I, I'm fine with an artist being like, I'm so excited for tomorrow night, like get ready or get pumped or whatever. Let's rage is definitely a, a more aggressive way of saying that. But 
um, yeah, from the looks of it, between two because of two arrests and several years down the line and, and probably some other smaller run-ins throughout those years too, he's this isn't the first time that he has been under fire for um, amping up his crowds to get to a level that they're actually hurting each other and that could really walk that fine tightrope of um, going over the edge and, and actually causing like real harm. Well, I think the issue too with this tweet, it wasn't just like let's rage. There was also one that specifically said not nah, and we still sneaking in wild ones in, which to me feels like a direct um, incitement of okay, break in past security. And you did, you did see footage of that happening. You saw the footage of the, 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 the fencing, the barricades falling down as yeah. people that did not pay, either didn't pay for tickets or were a surplus. I'm not really sure what their situation was, but they were rushing in. And, um, I also watch separately from that. I watch footage of people explaining how the security there was pretty much useless. I mean, they weren't really checking. I guess they were supposed to be checking for COVID status, but they weren't doing that. No, and then they ran out of wristbands. They ran to out of wristbands. COVID people, because I guess the wristband was an indicator that you had, a you had passed test. your test. Yeah, and they ran out of wristbands for that, which actually is an indicator that w it was oversold, somehow it was oversold. I don't know if tickets were only purchasable online or how that works, but that is probably like the first goof. <laughs> like that, <laughs> that is a recipe for disaster because whatever, however many say wristbands they ordered or people that they had to staff it or vendors, um, food, drink, like that's all plant pre-planned ahead of time according to the ideal max occupancy. So when that's surpassed, then everything kind of, they don't have enough. Well, and what's so frustrating about this is we just did this whole year and we're still in it of two weeks to slow the spread. And, and social distancing. Social distancing. And you have this event and I'm not against, I, I'm obviously for us getting out of the COVID stuff, but I just think it's hilarious that like, especially because like Houston is considered a more Democrat uh, run city. And so to see this event happen there where you should be at a bare minimum, be controlling the, the people that that space is meant to from like a fire code perspective. Yeah. Um, and that was also part of the issue was that there was barricades on the back of the, of the, the show of the state, the main stage. And so people couldn't like filter out. And so the only way was like people filtering in. And then the people that were there waiting for him at the front were getting crushed by the start because everyone had filtered in and there wasn't enough room to like move back. And usually in a festival, there's like a lot of empty space for you just to like let the cl the, the mm -hmm. crowd breathe, you mm -hmm. know? Um, That's actually critical. And for people like me who absolutely hate being in mosh pits and need a place to sort of regroup, and also with your friends, like that's really important too, to have landscape space where you can have a breather because even if it's just a day festival, like these things are some of the most exhausting um events you could ever go to mm -hmm. like <laughs> just in terms of so much stimulation like there's so many faces you're looking at that you're seeing security guards you're maybe having something to drink which already dehydrates you it's like people you're are not, doing drugs you're not allowed to bring things in so it's not like you can pack like water bottles yeah. and food like you it's it's very hectic and it's so fun but you really have to plan ahead and think of a lot of factors beforehand which I don't know if people have been in the headspace because these things haven't been happening much recently. Mm -hmm. um, but then also putting poor organization and poor like festival running on top of that. Um, that doesn't help out the the concert goers whatsoever. Something else that doesn't help out is um, the mandates and what that is doing for some of these industries. I mean, the mandates, the vaccine mandates are directly affecting the number of firemen we have, number of policemen that we have, number of EMTs that we have. Um, and it was reported that a lot of these EMTs and uh, medics couldn't even perform CPR. So you have unqualified people um, who are responsible for if anything goes wrong and, and things do go wrong at festivals. I've been to a festival. I've been overheated. I have got, I've been taken over the rail and, and you, 
you have that expectation that there are security guards that are strong enough to pull you over the rails if you're at the front. You have the expectation if you need water, they have extra water. That if you need CPR, you'll get CPR. And I mean, that goes back to our episode last week where we, or two weeks ago when we talked about us kind of becoming this um, lower your expectations model. And mm-hmm. that's what this also felt like. It didn't feel like things were up to code like they should be. And a, a event like this, it, you need to have that. You you don't want to take on that liability, especially mm-hmm. if you're um, the artist, whether it was intentional or not. Um, yeah. Especially if you're going to be tweeting stuff like "sneak in," like espe- like especially that you should be having security guards. No respect that are- for that. No respect for that. And then I and then there was so many accounts of the police. People would come up to them because many of the police were like in the VIP section, so they didn't see what was happening on the front stage. And so some people weren't even aware of like how bad stuff really was. No. Well, it's a big layout. Yeah. There's so many people. It's dark. There's probably not overhead lighting or lamps or anything like that. You're if you're on a side of of the like crowd area, there is no possibility that you're gonna get all the way to, over to the other side to see um, the state of things over there. Mm-hmm. And same, and that's that goes for security guards and and medics too. They're probably like camped in a particular area and are not likely going to be journeying all around the layout. Yeah. Or the um like the camp area, whatever you call it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think I mean something else that was weird to me was the fact that the deaths were finally disclosed and some of the injuries being linked to people going into cardiac arrest. And um, cardiac arrest is something that usually happens with older people. Um, I think that the average age is usually around 60. Um, and I, I don't think that there was a lot of 60 year olds at this event. Um, we saw the <laughs> the ages of the people that passed and they were really young, which is so tragic for them and their families. Um, but that's also strange to me. And then I'm also seeing that uh, there's been a lot of cases of people, young people who are athletes, um, specifically younger boys who have had cardiac arrests following um, the vaccine and reactions to that. So I- I'm feeling like that also felt like a cover up. Then I, let it, I don't know what these people's medical history were and what caused them to go into cardiac arrest. And I'm not a doctor, but I do think that if you're in an environment where it's claustrophobic, there's loud noise, there's the flames going off, you can't breathe. If you already are potentially could have a disposition to that, that could trigger the cardiac arrest. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I felt like that wasn't even really being highlighted. Like that was being glossed over. Um, Mm -hmm. because I've never heard, I've never heard of that happening before. Well, let's, let's think about intense situations that could cause you to like hit like your max. Mm -hmm. What normally happens at that? I feel like when stress levels peak, and someone goes into panic mode, you start to have like a panic attack first and you can like hyperventilate or you pass out. Um, those are like the two things that my brain think of first. It's not heart related. Mm-hmm. Um, or at least passing out, I guess that is heart related, but it's more lung. That's that's different than having like a near heart attack type mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. So um I'm not exactly sure. I I, I think that I that's know. super scary. And yeah. Yeah, typically people our age, young, <laughs> definitely under 60 years old, do not routinely have this, especially not at the rate of multiple people having this mm-hmm. all at the same time within an hour, two hour time frame, um, probably due to the same circumstances that like, what are the odds of that yeah. happening? It just doesn't really add up at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and that isn't so... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, the myocarditis, um, cause we've seen that in the press as well. Um, reportings of the reasons why people passed away mm-hmm. was because of a myocarditis triggering mm-hmm. the cardiac arrest. Mm-hmm. So also what are the odds that all of those people that somehow went into cardiac arrest also qualified for having myocarditis? Well, I don't know about, I know that people, I know with the vaccine that my, that has been the case, but I don't know if these people had 
what's it mito my myo, myocarditis myocarditis no i don't think that they had that that i read but okay maybe they did i i saw just the cardiac arrest okay um well i've seen the myocarditis word being tossed around as but to that has been, that having the, been another with the vaccine no not with the vaccine oh with this with this really yeah that the myocarditis somehow like through tests or whatever they had it and then went into cardiac arrest oh interesting so it's like they so, might have been struggling with that and then this triggered the cardiac arrest or maybe they didn't even know they had it interesting but then again people young people aren't like that's weird that they're having this like young people don't have heart issues and i feel like i mean this is kind of a different topic but it it, it, it is weird bear with <laughs> us it, it is weird right yes no completely yeah 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 it's not good and but that's what scares me is because i mean if people are starting especially the boys are having these heart conditions due to the vaccine are we going to see more events like this concert trigger that for them? Because we're already seeing there's like compilations of athletes falling to the ground because of passing out or collapsing mm -hmm. due to it's the not, heart stuff. Yeah, yeah. Which athletes, especially like professional athletes that are getting videotaped every week, like they are on paper the healthiest among us, mm -hmm. or they should be at least. Yeah. Is it physique wise, they look it. Yeah. So, okay. It's an interesting set of questions. But yeah, I think going back to what happened to these people, aside from the people who passed away, God bless their families. I, it is actually insane to even be saying that. This is something totally different than other concert tragedies that we've, that we've heard of. The two biggest ones that I can think of off, off the top of my head recently were the, the bombing at that Ariana Grande concert in the UK and then the massive shooting that occurred in Vegas. Mm -hmm which both of those were perpetrator caused, like terrorism caused. This is so different than that. There wasn't like a, a staple figure that emerged that created all of this madness at Astroworld. This was- Internal. This was all internal. And it's, I feel like the reason why this whole story is so interesting is because so many people were all debating on who is liable. Like how could this, how could we have prevented this? Was it all of these elements combined? Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. Did everything just combine in the worst way possible? Or was it tra only Travis Scott? Was it only the event organizers? Or was it something Illuminati? I don't know. Like everyone's <laughs> on all these different There's pages. There's so many different pages. Which is why I find this so interesting. So, um, but yeah, I, going back to, the to um, I guess like the crowd and, and the ways that people have been describing this energy, like it actually is my worst nightmare. <laughs> And I already, like anyone who's been to a festival with me, like I'm 5'2", I already don't want to go directly to the front because A, I can't see, B, I have actually been in a few mosh pits where one time I got completely elbowed in my eye and I had a black eye for like two weeks. And then another time, another time I was in this, I think I, it was Sheck West who was playing and it was like the year that Mo Bamba was yeah. like, like, think of a crazier drop than that. Um, and... I, I remember like I was with a friend who was a guy, a bigger guy than me, and I literally like grabbed his shirt and I just yanked it so hard and I, I just went directly as far back out of it as I possibly could. Like my in, inner instinct was like, get out. Like, mm -hmm. you know what happens, especially when like men have like either alcohol or drugs in their system. Like, I think that that just mixes with the testosterone and they just get so like amped and like invigorated and then they just like want to hate each other. Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And some women like to do it too. I don't really understand it, but um, yeah. And I don't, from what I could tell from the videos, I don't think that at this concert it was those uh, – like internal pits that were forming. It, there was there any it room was, for there that. There was no room. That's yeah. what's crazy is people were like, oh, it was the mosh pits that like trampled everyone. And I was like, I think that like literally people couldn't breathe. And there was people, like it wasn't an enjoyable, it wasn't like people were having fun and then like, oops, someone died. Like it was horrible, at least for the sections that were super packed. Maybe yeah. in the back it wasn't as bad. I know that the, depending on where you were, you had different experiences. But 
some of the people that were at the front and had been sitting there all day and kind of waiting for the, the show to come on, they, they, they say that their first sense of, aside from all those red flags um, with getting in and not there not being enough wristbands and seeing people storm and just things weren't working properly and feeling like the security wasn't checking, um, patting people down for weapons. It just, there was a lot of red flags leading up to it. But I think the biggest thing that I heard from people um, that was kind of a consensus was when everyone was sitting down and then that 30 minute timer goes off. Right. Mm. And it's starting to like 30 really second or it was 30 minutes. And then what? It started for 30 minutes, but then when it got to like the last three minutes is when people started to get okay, really uneasy, it. but it was like that intense beat that was, it was really setting the tone for like what the mood of the concert was going to be. Yeah. Cause when you're waiting for 30 minutes and you want to hear music and you've been standing around and it's already like the end of the day yeah. and you've already gotten there, you've been there for so long, like you're already maybe tired, mm -hmm. like that just like puts a little clock inside of you that's like, okay, count down to like going crazy. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened. If that was their goal, then they succeeded at it. Yeah. And so then at around minute three is when people started to really, it started to get really crowded and people started to feel like, oh, like something's wrong. I, I need to get out of here. You know, because when you start feeling like, like the people this, that were like in the crowd at, mm -hmm. at the front area. Yeah. Okay. And so at that point though, it's kind of like too late. And I think the point that you brought up where like this wasn't like people getting trapped in mosh pits, but this was literally people having no room to breathe and they couldn't even get pulled out. Like a lot of people were struggling to even get to convince the security guards to pull them over the fence. Some people were successful, but a lot of people weren't. And it just felt like like there was no hope. And then when you start hearing about the bodies that were stacking and people walking over bodies, that's when I really started to get curious yeah. about what happened because I've never heard about that before. One quote I heard that hit me the hardest was when this guy said, if you were someone who got pulled under, mm -hmm. like there was no hope of coming out. Yeah. Because I think it got to the point, especially towards the front where people were literally climbing up like grabbing each other's shoulders, pushing themselves above the people who were around them. And the only way to do that is to then push those people down. Mm. So it was literally like a fight of who could have like the best high ground. Yeah. And the only way to do that is literally like by shoving people down under into this abyss where typically there's shoes and drugs and trash and disgusting, maybe even piss, like <laughs> all of the nastiest stuff you could possibly imagine. So – and not being able to breathe on top of that, like that is, <laughs> I don't know how we could verify or I'm sure they're looking into all of these people who have passed away, like what exactly were the causal factors, but I would not be surprised um, if so a few of those were because of that, like suffocation underneath or like broken rib cages mm -hmm. from underneath, like mm -hmm. getting stomped on, like they're, yeah. Or if those were the injured people, at least yeah. they didn't pass away. But like seriously, that yeah. that's severe. No, I know. And I, I did want to play. There's so many videos on this. I mean, if you haven't already and you want to hear all the firsthand accounts, um, like go on Instagram, go on TikTok, go on YouTube. You'll be able to find people that are speaking out. I mean, there's people that are speaking out that are even getting – like censored and being told like to, to stop talking. So I, that, that concerns yeah. me for sure. But I did want to play um, at least one clip so you guys kind of get a sense of, of what happened. And this was from um, a, a gentleman named, I think his name's Stone Huey. Um, is that how you pronounce it? Well, that's his handle. I don't know if that's his <laughs> real name, but <laughs> that's his handle. This um, guy seems really down to earth and I really, like him a lot. Yeah, he has a very, he has like a, a seven part um, video on TikTok, but this is just, just one, one short clip of it. He's a relatable kid though, too. Like and he's so not this is too part young. Six. Yeah. And being out of that barricade and into that VIP section where people were getting CPR I saw people foaming at the mouth. People were panting. Like, it was like I was in a war zone, medical field of a war zone. Like, I don't know what it's like to be in a medical field of a war zone, but that's what it felt like. And I also was explaining to my parents, thankful I could see them, um, that that guy that told me, put your arms over my shoulder, I don't know what he looked like. I was, my eyes were closed. I was blacked out, but that's the only voice I heard over the music and the screaming. 
And to me, I just believe that, that was God or an angel basically just saving me. And like, I remember saving these two girls and I just wish, like, if I could go back, I wish that I would could go and save more people. I wish I could help pull more people out, but I was in still panic mode. And I was panicked because I didn't know if my girlfriend and two friends were out. And I was wanting to find them. And I remember I had to crawl underneath the VIP stage. I was on my hands and knees crawling underneath to get out. And I remember getting to the gate and by the, on the other side of the VIP section to jump out and go to the back crowd. And I remember telling these guys, like, can you get me over this barricade? And they thought I was a celebrity. Like, yeah, man, come on in. They had this other crowd had no idea what was going on. And so I was, like, trying to find the nearest security guard, the nearest officer after I plowed through this crowd to tell them what's going on. And I remember running to the medics and, like, telling them, like, we need a medic, like, over here. And, like, they were looking at me like I was on drugs, like I was crazy. And they were sending me away. And so I was like, okay, y'all are no help. I remember telling the officer, like, you're no help. I was like, there's people in this stage area that are dying. And she just thought I was crazy. And so I remember calling my girlfriend's mom and, like, trying to find my friends and meet up. But luckily, God's grace, we are all safe. And we were able to come home. And I'm so sorry for those families that... Your kid is, you still haven't found him, or if he is gone, I am, I'm very sorry. Um, but y'all will be reimbursed for this. Something's going to happen. Something needs to happen. Um, people are, need to be held liable for this. Um, this is not okay. Um, I, it was like I was in hell. I read the Bible today and I had just, Everything I have described in my head, and I keep hearing the screams of people, images of people on my head, straining. It's just like hell. Um, but it's to me, it's just absolutely absurd. That this is still hasn't gone out enough, and that's why I'm making this. Um, I'll explain the rest. And- There's a lot there, but oh, I wow. think I, I my biggest takeaway is one: the fact that. He stated when he got to the VIP section, the security that were around there, A, thought he was a celebrity, and B, when they, he was looking at all the people that were in there, they had no idea what like, was going they on. They were so chill. Once again, yeah. elites versus the regular folk, like they get this special treatment and then they're all stuck in their own little world. They don't care about any, what is happening to everybody else. And it's that's just very like... <laughs> metaphorical and <laughs> yeah there was a there was a headline of an article and it said eight people dead but kylie jenner makes it out safe with like pregnancy. thank gosh <laughs> and i mean i'm happy that she's okay i don't want her to die i don't want any i didn't want anyone to die from this but i just think that we we forget that every human life is equal and it doesn't we we forget that that concept and then that's why you have a situation like that where it felt like the vip people were protected at all costs and they weren't letting the regular folk over the barricade to breathe and get medical treatment and i think the thing that he when he describes it as a medical war zone i i feel like that is a really good imagery to explain Mm -hmm. how it's going down i mean um, I'm just thinking back to like the original footage that we saw of like the COVID stuff when that first hit in the hospitals and stuff. And that's kind of what I'm imagining there, you know, like it's people- scary seeing regular folk who are not medics or probably have no idea how to actually help try to treat someone when they're needing CPR, needing, um, a defibrillator, whatever the, yeah, all of that. What's it called? What's the, like, a shocker thing called. oh oh um ah, shoot i don't we'll know figure it out. but yeah i know what you're talking about i totally to yeah, shark I, someone's heart. Yeah. yes yes it's really scary seeing people do that um because i feel like that does correlate to like an actual war zone mm-hmm. where it's every man for himself like you've got to help out as much as you can. can like the best of the best of us emerge in moments like that um, but I can't even imagine like being in an environment where a, you're not only trying to protect yourself and trying to make sure you and your group are okay, but then also, um, get into the headspace of 
giving of yourself and trying to help people over these fences and help give CPR and carry bodies over your shoulder. Like, um, yeah, I have a lot of respect for that. And I hope that if I ever were placed in a position um, of that level of intensity that I would have the strength to be able to do that. But mm -hmm. then again, you never know. I feel like like that guy, that kid just said it really well. He wished that he could have done that, but he was in panic mode and was trying to figure out what was going on. And I think in those moments, like the adrenaline and emotions just totally take over. And you also have no idea. Like they didn't know, know the news of what was going on until the day after. Mm -hmm. So they're in it. Like, yeah. who knows? Yeah, they don't. And you're just, I think also the people that were trying to help, I mean, he did go to, like in that situation, you're supposed to go to a professional to help because that's what you think is going to do the most. Because, you know, you're like, what can I do? I'm not an, I'm not a, I don't know how to give CPR. I'm not a police officer. I'm not a specialist in that area. Um, and that is what he tried to do. And a lot of people, try, they try to go to the police and the police thought that they were on drugs or that they were like imagining things. And whether or not that was their fault or it was an accident, um, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Um, I agree. And I, I think that it was also unfortunate that then there was all these like kind of fake stories that were emerging after uh, initially. Like I remember um, like there was one police officer, sheriff, or maybe he was a security guard, and he said that he got injected by something, but then later that was retracted. And again, that's making me feel skeptical of this whole situation because – I just like, how do you mess up that story that there was a needle going around? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> just when one I first needle. heard that, I was like, that doesn't like, I was like, I don't buy that. And and maybe there were people that had like drug reactions. I don't know, but I, I just, I, I have a hard time believing someone's just going around stabbing people with a needle. And then when that, Turned out to be like hooded driven. figures with needles that were like instructed to just find random people and jab them. Yeah, I was like, I feel like that's covering up for something else. Um, yeah, well, but that, then again, that's another example of okay, stories like this are tangible, and I feel like we naturally, human nature, I think we gravitate towards putting blame and excuses and pointing fingers to tangible things that could have happened. That's very tangible. Mm -hmm. What isn't tangible is really realizing hey, this was just a lot of satanic like emphasis mm -hmm. and satanic encouragement, satanic imagery. Like I'm not even like hiding the word. Like it was when you have references of hell and see you on the other side, like this is scary stuff. Like you can't mix all of these things together plus people's emotions and emotional like fragility and, and young, and well. young, young <laughs> people who are so malleable and already like just like – eager to like suck it all in like it's all just a recipe for disaster so that but that goes to say that those are intangibles a little mm -hmm. bit mm -hmm. yeah. yeah this was an, an interesting situation where you have a mix of of tangible things but also intangible things and i think when you have all the tangible things and then on top of it you have though that that marketing that you're talking about that demonic dark energy like that isn't helping the situation that isn't going to comfort people when they feel like they physically can't breathe if they physically feel unwell and then on top of that their spiritual uh soul is feeling overwhelmed as well because of the the ambiance and the aesthetic uh yeah that's not going to be pleasant and that's why you're hearing people literally describe it as hell not mm. just like i was uncomfortable or i thought i was gonna die but like literally using that imagery because you have the physical experience due to all those tangible issues um a combination of what live nation failed to do what the police failed to do what travis scott and his team failed to do and then that imagery and that 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 energy and vibe on top of that is going to make people feel like they experienced something that Completely. was almost supernatural. And this is actually something like Kanye has talked a lot about this because he has obviously been on kind of both sides of this coin with his music and it being more that traditional um, rap, that heavy sounding, you know, kind of more like talking about um, like sound wise. It's similar. Like Kanye has played around with the, the more auto-tune, electronic, like, voice effects. Because Travis, like, 
obviously Travis doesn't have like a good singing voice. Basically mm-hmm. all of his um, like vocals in his songs are that auto tune, like very robotic. I think he honestly really started the trend with that because um, he really came out right out of the gate starting with that. So that's a part of his brand. But the, like comparing Kanye to Travis, I think that Kanye and him have very similar um, like tunes and like they have deep bass like they've got like hip hop type beats but it's very it's like very modernized I Mm -hmm, think mm -hmm. but the lyrics world's different completely different but some of I mean some of Kanye's earlier stuff definitely like dabbled more in that terrain and I think that a lot of people that are um in like hip-hop or rap like they kind of start off on that footing and then they kind of if they have some sort of like conversion or like are start playing with different like a sounds, strong bass already they might can they might transcend that into something a little bit more uh positive and i actually didn't know about this but kanye t- has talked about this in, in multiple incident instances but there is literally a connection between frequency of sound and whether that is more of a negative energy or more like a negative like spiritual realm or more of a like angelic positive almost gospel Mm. feeling realm and Mm. that was what drove him to start transitioning with um his the the i'm bipolar what was that album called life of pablo no the the by the one with ghost town oh i think that was yay yay okay i think it was literally just yay (laughs) okay well that album but then there was the follow God one. Yes. And then there was like Jesus Christ is King or whatever. Oh, yes. Yes. And then there was Donda and you slowly see, and then you have like the Sunday service stuff and you see, see him tapping into these positive frequencies and these more angelic, um, like more higher tones. power tones. Um, and he, he's talked about the di- like dichotomous imagery between those two different things and i just wanted to play a clip from it um he's talked about it on multiple occasions but this was like just the the quickest one i could find um just as i think it's relevant to this conversation exists in the lowest chakra of your body the majority of content that's related to the 808 is killer or sexual content the original 808s was even off pitch so that meant it's an actual sound in the track that you don't realize is there that is fucking up your entire frequency and now today every time i hear a car come out it's 808 but if you think about african music and hip-hop and movies break it to break dance to it was light the percussion it was upbeat Mm. it was the drums Mm. now it's like and all of this is a bigger and it's like man you know at this point it's like they should have killed me when i said george bush don't care about black people i ain't got nothing to say you know they snl making my wife say i divorced well, that's the main part on the frequency stuff. But I, I <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> yeah, he I just he just did a new interview. Yeah. Um, I haven't finished listening to it, but that was a portion of it. And then I I couldn't find the original one, but like I think back in 2018, he did an interview where he like really talks about that as he's kind of like developing this, the Sunday service and all that stuff. I think the frequency concept is really interesting because I mean I'm not a sound engineer. I think that. that can get to a very like scientific level there's probably a lot of science behind it but yeah i i've never really thought of that in regards to music and and especially like rap music which is heavily like produced electronically produced um so yeah maybe we should recommend that travis look into that maybe a little bit (laughs) prevent one of these events from happening again (laughs) yeah i think i think it's actually interesting because i think growing up in a religious like environment both like in school and at home like I thought like I was kind of like I it's not like my like my family was like oh you can't listen to like certain music but I definitely think they were kind of aware that you know if you're listening to music that says like the f word every five seconds and talks about like drugs like, and, like and raping sex, women like yeah. and it's like that's not gonna be like that could negatively influence you and i think in our culture we've separated that and been like oh like i can listen to that and that's not gonna affect me like i can still be a good person and separate myself from yeah, what's yeah. what i'm exposing myself to but i think that we forget how um 
how much we absorb, like absorb into us. Like we're literally products of our environment. And of course that is going to also extend to like the music that we're listening to. And even if you're not like, even if like something isn't like directly like dark or like sight or sight or satanic or like ritual or whatever, like it's just, if, if something has a negative connotation, and you're letting that in that that could affect you in a negative way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that it's a great point. I think that people going to this like concert, they I mean, I definitely overlooked some of the symbolism and I didn't really I didn't really think about like even like the post that he did. I mean, just just dystopia is here with like dark like that is actually he's not wrong like i that, mean we're kind of living in a, a little bit of a dystopia we are, right now. but we are. but saying that is in turn promoting it and people who are loyal fans and are, listen to him and look up to him because they think he's talented or they like his music whatever it may be people who are young and have these idols like we we, we always talk about celebrities this is a recurring theme on this show yeah we did an episode on it <laughs> they they attach to that and and it's not shown in a light that's like negative that it's by him doing that it does um bring like more attention and and honestly like kind of an encouraging way yeah which isn't good so people who have platforms like these whether Travis is active on social media or not or active with his fan base or not they need to be so ultra aware of what they're putting out because it has an effect it really does have an effect yeah and actually i'll give it to the kardashians i think that they do know that i think that they do know that a little bit i don't support a lot of things that they do and i don't relate to their lifestyle in the slightest but i do feel like out of all of the things that they have been involved in and people that they know and just the amount of reach that they have, the fact that they haven't, like that this is the first time that they're slightly correlated to something like really big in the last Bad several press. years. Yeah. yeah. Is very impressive, I think. But what does that say about, I don't know if that's the same thing because like what we're saying is like maybe Travis Scott needs to be accountable for what his posts, what the effect they have on other people, not the effect they have on him. Like what you're saying is that, like, of course, I think the Kardashians have gotten really good at figuring out what to post, what what not to post in terms of, like, making sure their image is good and stuff. They're but, good at staying out of bad press. But that doesn't mean that they're necessarily thinking about what is my post, like, what effect does that have on other people? Like, I think that we're so in our own heads that we don't realize that, like, hey, if I have, like, 8 million followers like even if they're good at staying out of the press um like they're still they're not worried about what their stuff has like what the effect it has on other people you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. Kris Jenner posting all of her birthday flowers a day after or two days after like this whole thing went down I don't think that has a positive effect on other people you know what I mean? Um, no, it's rubbing it in in people's faces. Whoever's seeing those photos, yeah, yeah, that's all they do is just flex. Like it's just flex post after flex post. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, especially when something like this went down to that, like went down, and your family's tied to it. I mean, both of your daughters were there, and they haven't mm-hmm. spoke on it yet, and mm-hmm. you're you're flexing your birthday. I remember seeing Kendall's post before everything went down. Like she was backstage and you could see like the back of the stage set design. And then she took it down the next day, which I don't really know why. Maybe just like if someone were to come across it, then they'd be like, oh, she was there. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. And I think, I think that if you do believe and we can talk about some more of like the symbolism that was there um, that yeah, freaked people I think we out. Should. Um, but I think that overall, like my take on this is, is that I, I do believe in the spiritual realm and the spiritual world. And I think if you are someone that does believe in that, you think you you're aware that there is good and bad energy constantly always around you and in battle with each other. And if you want to be good, you want to align yourself with that like positive, good energy. And you don't want to be influenced by that dark Mm. energy and that, that evil evilness. And so I think you have to have good radar and recognizing what is 
good or bad energy, what is something that could lead to bad energy Mm -hmm. and how you can cultivate good energy because I do think that there is is an element of our daily life that we can control to help create good energy, to keep good energy there, to push out bad. Like I do think that there's a lot of elements involved, but at least being able to recognize the good from the bad um, as best as you can is a, is a good start. Yeah, and I think that even if you don't think that – like even like even let's say Travis Scott, he wasn't trying to – incite violence with his choice of imagery just the fact that he was willing to play around with it I don't think that should be overlooked because like I said if you dabble in this stuff you have to realize like you don't have control over what that energy can produce and so if if by you tapping into that and even if you're just tapping into it because you think it's like cool and trendy and experimental you're inviting that negative energy into that space which is going to cause more chaos and havoc. It's acting on a temptation. Exactly. Into a already bad environment. And I think that that is what caused everyone to be like so traumatized by this. And the first thing is, I mean, even just uh, the set and the, the like mountain, like there's been so many videos about what that means. And then the <laughs> wordage of like, see you on the other side. Yeah, yeah. And then his t-shirt. With the little blue people, it's all very biblical. Yes, yeah. And if and a lot of people don't know, a lot of people aren't raised really religious anymore. So I think a lot of people don't even know what, what those imagery and what those symbols are. Yeah, yeah. They've probably never been exposed to it before. Mm-hmm. But I do know people like a lot of people know that the eye and the tri- like the triangles, like those are Illuminati. like Illuminati typically negative like dark energy associated with that so they were throwing eyes and triangles all throughout all of the designs for like promotional sets and promotional assets and whatever so um most people do know that that's not those aren't like Mm -hmm. direct biblical image like that's not biblical imagery yeah i know i just think that people don't think that that has an effect on the physical world i think that we've been so conditioned to only be concerned about the physical world and I mean that goes all the way back to um like our obsession with evolution and our obsession with like material science and not leaving like not ha- not allowing that balance of faith and reason to exist and that things can be that things can exist and you don't you don't have an explanation for it like that there's mystery in the world mm-hmm. and I think that we've eliminated mystery and we've eliminated the belief of the spiritual realm. Therefore, we don't think that tapping into that stuff has any effect on like our physical um, life. Yeah, we think we're indestructible. Yeah. We've got it all figured out. That, that we're in control. That everything has to be concrete and that anything that isn't concrete is a conspiracy theory or something like that that's yeah. non-existent. But, but yeah, no, I, I really like And yeah, I mean, another point. example is like I didn't even think about – I mean, I – there were certain things of his marketing that I was like, oh, that's kind of creepy, but like, I don't know, like maybe he's just, just like, that's weird. Like even just entering in from his mouth. Like I remember seeing that and being like, oh, that's weird. And now there's all these TikTok videos <laughs> of like that being side by side by some, what painting of like Jesus going down and like, yeah, people from the underworld or something. I don't yeah. know. It's something like that. It's some sort of like ancient art piece that was done to reference, yeah, something with with Christ and and um, Satan, Lucifer, yeah. And it is a very similar image with that mouth being opened. And I think I wonder if because I know in Houston the original Astro World, I believe it was called Astro World. Um, had that same thing at the entrance, the same open-mouthed sculpture um, mm-hmm. entrance piece that mm-hmm. people had to enter into. So I think that that was what inspired Travis to do that whole album cover and then use it with this. But how he placed it at this festival, like really at the entrance, like this huge blow-up. Also the back, I believe, was a skeleton like it wasn't the same. Oh. I was. It wasn't the same design as like it was as like the head the on the on the album and cover. Inside was like yes, yeah, yes. Or maybe even the whole thing was the skeleton. But 
<laughs> like that's definitely not what is shown on the album cover, which is the album that he was performing. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's super creepy. <laughs> no. Or maybe it was just because it's Halloween, but like Halloween's already gone. Like this was last weekend. Yeah. And um. But that's also something we we dumbed down. Like even Halloween. Like people, a lot of people don't realize that Halloween. The word Halloween comes from All Hallows' Eve, and it's about cleansing dark spirits before the feast day of All Saints' Day. Um, Which is celebrating people who died for their faith, martyrs who were actually great people yeah. who passed away for their faith. It's actually a day of celebrating them. And Halloween, we've turned it into this whole thing of like, wait, we have – like I didn't even know this until like very recently, and – we need to talk about that more, like yeah. what that actual basis of Halloween is. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. <laughs> yeah. Everything gets like very watered down every holiday, every like. Well, we just push, meeting. we push faith and we push the positive energy that spirituality brings. We've pushed it out completely of yeah. everything. Yeah. And this is what happens. We get events like these where we don't know what to glorify, so we glorify satanic imagery. We glorify satanic messaging. We glorify chaos and violence with each other. Like, what? Like, I, I don't understand. And moshing and all that. Like, why would someone in their right mind ever want to, like, ram their body into another person? Because that's fun. Like, I, maybe I just don't have a, the brain of a man, but... I just, that's just something I will never be able to understand. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, and it's something that, I mean, this isn't the first case of it either. I think that a lot of celebrities um, have dealt with this and, and have dealt with, like, it's there's just, There's it's been a lot of borderline security issues at shows. And I literally looked, I, I read an article that listed 50 plus, like, m big artists, big top performers throughout history that have on their own volition, not being instructed to do so, just stopped their show for a brief moment and said, hey, like, I want you to have fun, but like, we need to be safe here. Yeah, that was and, also- And that could have been easily done. It takes two seconds. That doesn't detract from anyone's fun. It just keeps things calm. Or maybe if Travis could have at least done that once, if it's twice, that's fine. They perform for over an hour. So- it, that's not out of the realm of possibility, but it seemed like the videos that I saw, he was looking, like there were moments where he dropped the microphone down to his hip and he was looking around, like you could see his head turning, like he is scanning the crowd. And people are screaming, And then lifted the it up and then still said, let's keep going and like harder. Yeah. <laughs> like what? There was a point where the, the ambulance was coming through the crowd and he goes, point your middle finger up to the sky and i'm just like what like what does that mean like why so unnecessary especially when people are screaming like stop this show stop the show stop the show and you're talking about like flipping off the sky like what and he just kept singing throughout all of it so i mean i'm just having a very hard time believing that he just knew nothing um his apology video was weird i thought that kylie's post was weak um I, I agree. I, I just and she deleted it. It wasn't even. I think it was a story. It wasn't even like a post. No one's even done a real post. They've just done stories. And if you go on all of Kylie's photos and Drake's photos, for this matter, you can go and you can't comment mm. on other photos. Have nothing to do with this. That de definitely did not used to be that way. And so you don't think that people are like turning on them and they're free. Like they literally took Travis Scott out of their new the kardashians new hulu show i don't really know much about the hulu show because i don't watch the show <laughs> but i honestly thought they were done i thought that they had like the 10th season or 20th season whatever i don't know how many seasons they've had but i just it's amazing that like like chris knows to pull back so clearly there must be enough public outrage from this that they don't want to show and the media isn't really putting any blame on anyone and so that's being suppressed who should be responsible for this mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. then someone was also talking about how to be skeptical of accepting the refund money um because apparently that might you might be signing away your rights to sue so it just doesn't feel like anything's genuine in terms of trying to make this situation right. And yeah, I could be yeah. wrong, but that's just 
my feeling. Um, no, yeah, there's definitely a lot of misinformation going around, also lack of information. And I, something that has really, really frustrated me after all of this was this was a ma- this was classified as a mass cas- like casualty event, and it is absolutely tragic. Something that so many people our age can relate to because we've all been to events like this of a similar size, similar music style, similar energy, whatever. The fact that nobody has posted tribute memorials mm-hmm. over something like this, mm-hmm. but people that have absolutely no like reason to get tribute posts or whatever it is. I'm trying I'm trying to think of an example. I might have to think on it, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we There has been cri- no commentary on it. Yeah. Like what is going on? This is horrif- like horrible. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wasn't there someone who died and it, it, it was like one of the, it was during like um all of the like police brutality stuff, but it was someone who like also had a history of like raping his girlfriend. Or I so, uh, I forget the name. But. Jacob Blake. Yes, and we there were so many tributes for that, and there's no tributes for sixteen year old girl who died. Ten year old Travis. A ten year old concert. <laughs> like, and I think that that's because people people. People, even if we they protect the elites, I yeah. don't know why, or maybe these, maybe people are posting, but they've been taken down. We don't know, but but whoever has been on social media in the last week, ten days, we all know that there has not been enough coverage or empathy posts like showing compassion for this mm-hmm. or any sort of memorial. I I haven't seen a single thing. I think it's two things. I think it's number one that we protect the elites and that we glorify celebrities. And it's like we can't even imagine putting even even if even if even if this wasn't like a a ritual or like a sacrifice, we can't even imagine Travis Scott being stupid enough to let this happen on a technical standpoint. And so we don't even want to like we love, we quote unquote love, like I think there's people that we love too much so we can't cancel because we put them in this like God category. And I feel like the Kardashians, any anyone in their extension kind of falls into that category. Um, and I don't think that that's healthy. And again, that goes back to like not addressing um, the spiritual realm and, and, and like being aligned with that as opposed to being aligned with celebrities Mm -hmm. and worshiping that um and i also think that the second reason why it might not be getting covered is that maybe people instinctually know that there was like something really weird and dark about that whole situation and they just don't even want to flirt with it they don't want to learn about it they don't want to educate themselves on that because that means that they have it's daunting yeah it's daunting and we don't we don't want to think about that. We want to live like so. It's just brush it under the rug, like let everybody else deal with it. Like I'm not going to touch it. Yeah, and I didn't realize that like so many artists in general like do play with this type of imagery and stuff. Like even um, I'm Snoop Dogg, he was just on Joe Rogan, and he actually did like a gospel album in 2018, and and it, he's talked about like his kind of experience with believing in God and stuff, but in in 1995, and this is before we were born, so I didn't know about this, but there was a uh, a short film and music video, which I'm sure some of our uh, older uh, listeners know about, called Murder is the Case. And I, I watched it, and it definitely plays with a lot of these same themes that um, Travis was experimenting with. I mean, you had like an upside-down cross in it. There was a lot of red. It was a story about um, like going to jail and like it and selling your soul and and a lot of that like similar Mm. um hidden in plain sight yeah hidden in plain sight um and so i think that this is something that people with a lot of fame they it's easy to go through that type of experimentation um without realizing the effect that that Mm -hmm. potentially might have Mm -hmm. yeah Um, no the snoop dogg's evolution is fascinating i'm i'm so happy for him that he has I, I listened to his episode with Joe Rogan and I also listened to a few of those clips where he was just talking about, I don't know, like his mindset in relationship with God. And yeah, he's not the most like well spoken in terms or well versed in all of the lingo surrounding like his faith, but 
um, it's definitely a lot more positive and it doesn't include that um, satanic symbolism or the dark stuff because yeah, clearly he has grown a lot. He's been through a lot. Like uh, guys had a crazy life. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure everything that he's been to has all contributed to where he's at today. But but yeah, I'm happy for him. It mm -hmm. sounds like he's got it a little more figured out and he yeah. seems happy about it. So that's amazing. Um, so yeah, I, and that, that's a great example too. Like someone who was of a similar like fame level that Travis is at right now or mm -hmm. has yet to hit. Like Snoop Dogg is Snoop Dogg. Yeah, he's an he's, icon. He's iconic in terms yeah. of culture and hip hop and everything. yeah. yeah like a, a, a real um, trailblazer in that genre of music and basically um, like everybody knows him. So I think that uh, being able to compare that to say like maybe this whole thing will push Travis more towards that. Like maybe he's going to have a whole second coming and, and totally reinvent himself. We don't know. I would hope so. To be honest, I feel like there's a way that we can – listen to music like this that's fun and upbeat and like hits like the hard bass like you can feel it in your body I, I like that stuff mm -hmm. too but I don't want to be buying into and letting lyrics like that that are about like literally sex drugs hurting yourself hurting others like money like just the most awful type of of themes I don't want that to be going in my ears um that much and and I just, yeah, I think that there's a way that we can bridge and come to some sort of balance where we can still listen to that type of music that we enjoy, but not glorify themes like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I hope I hope so. That would be, that'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to become a rapper, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we start to see some improvement in that whole Yeah, industry. and music is a beautiful thing. I mean, it's not this thing to be scared of and not listen to and like throw the, the we don't you know don't throw the baby out with the bathwater you know like this music is some of my best memories i've been at concerts it's listening, all like, music involved like being with my friends and and it's it's beautiful when it when it goes right and you don't have this <laughs> yes. this situation where people are yeah. tightly together like and festivals sardines. when they're festivals when they're pulled off in the way that they should be successfully are amazing. Yeah. It's a place to escape. It's escapism everywhere, food, drinks, um, people that you can run into. Like it's fun to feel like you're all in one place with a bunch of people that whether you went with a group or you run into people that you know, like it's really collaborative and social. And then the music on top of that, like seeing people that – you listen to like while you go to the gym in the car, like seeing them in person is just another level of of immersion. But something like this where all the elements just don't go well, like the people running it, who knows where to go? Yeah. Like everyone's running around like chickens with their heads cut off. <laughs> should be laughing. It's just not, it doesn't sound enticing to me. No, it's not fun um, for sure. And, this something like this should have never happened and we definitely when we post this we are gonna um do the best we can to find all the good go fund me's yep. um so people can donate to the families that were affected by this um also i'd like to give a huge shout out to all the people who have been outspoken on it people yes. who maybe weren't injured but were there um like i now follow a few people and I'm going to keep following them because they've been reporting still and seem very down to earth with just talking on it and and swallowing their pride, not trying to like capitalize on the fact that they've become semi-famous over being well known for it, but um, are trying to use it to to bring good out of to bring more light out of the situation. A few of them, like I mean, they are real heroes in this mm -hmm. whole circumstance. Yeah, so we, we thank I have a them. lot of respect for it. Yeah, for sure, totally agree. Yeah. But we'll see what happens. I feel like there's going to be more info that comes out by the time we post this. Who knows yeah. what will have come out. But um, as of right now, this is an ongoing thing. Hopefully there's investigations involved. Um, I've heard there's 100 lawsuits that were just served to Travis. So we'll see how those all play out. He has a flood of lawyers at his house right now. Um, yeah, 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 I'm sure. 
yeah, he's he's in it. <laughs> I just hope that he's not trying to like hide from it and just pay people to whatever. I pay hope that he off. hope that he does the right thing. I'll I be hope praying that he for him to do the right thing. I, I really do. Um something like this should just should never happen again. I agree. It's sad. Yeah. Tragedy. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Um, please like and subscribe to the video. Add some comments. We love reading the comments. We will respond to the comments. Yep. So load us with feedback. Yes. <laughs> and also shout out to all of our new listeners. Um, I am glad that you guys have subscribed. We have a lot of new listeners from last week. So welcome. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> to the show. We are trying to post super regularly now. Um, we're happy to have you once again. Love feedback. Um, and yeah, keep, stay subscribed. Um, we're excited. Holidays coming up. Yeah. Fun stuff. So, yeah, we'll be back soon. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Uh, we appreciate you. And uh, tune in next time. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right, bye.